Sig Sauer P210A is kind of a neat pistol. It's wood and steel and made in USA. Um, it's nice and accurate. Being heavy, it really absorbs recoil. I've used it a few times in competition when my tendonitis was acting up and um, the, the lack of felt recoil made it worth holding the extra weight. Um, and it's just a, it's a neat gun. A little expensive not the kind of uh, status symbol I would buy. I bought it when there was a nation, nationwide boycott for something. I don't remember. We weren't supposed to buy something this one day for whatever stupid cause. So I decided I was going to buy something that day. And um, the pistol that I wanted to buy was not in stock at my local gun shop. He had this and I said, well, okay, I'm, you know, countering the woke boycott, buying an American-made pistol seemed like the, the best thing to do. Um, the downside to it that just doesn't make any sense is the magazine that only holds eight rounds in a full-size pistol. Eight rounds of nine millimeter. Apparently it's a tradition, I don't know, a nod back to the original P210, but still that's that's nuts. I mean, if it was 45 or if it was 10 millimeter, all right, well, eight, yeah, okay. But a full-size 9mm that only holds 8 rounds is nuts. So, apparently there are three possibilities to increase that by a little. The first is taking your existing magazine and shortening the follower, because that there seems to be a lot of extra material down there that we could probably get 9one millimeters out of there and cram in another round. I mean, I know there needs to be some height so that it doesn't tilt and get jammed but I'm willing to do a little carving and see what happens. The other possibility is a floor plate from Armory Craft that gives you plus one capacity presumably just by swatching, swapping out the floor plate although there's this tiny little Allen wrench that came with it so we'll see it may not go on like the stock one did um, and then the other possibility is a Pro Mag uh, magazine for a P225 that holds 10 rounds. So apparently, and this is not my discovery, YouTube told me about it, they're pretty darn close to matching each other, except the catch for the magazine release it needs to be adjusted, filed just a little bit up. Um, and I I put it in, it slides in the gun, it just doesn't lock. So, a little bit of file or Dremel work, um, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to experiment with trimming a magazine. That'll give me nine plus one, which would work for most competitions. But if I trim, or yeah, trimming the follower. If I trim the follower and the floor plate, that gives me ten. Um, trimming this will give me ten plus one. Maybe. That, well, I can't do that in Maryland. I'll have to try that out in Pennsylvania. But it looks like I should be able to get to 10, or at least 9 plus 1. So we'll see what works. Right off the bat, this is the follower out of the Pro Mag versus the SIG. So, yeah, certainly. Uh, we ought to be able to get rid of some space. Um, it's interesting, this, I don't know if you can see... It's got some uh, swarf, I don't know what you call it, the little remnants from being machined and it's just not, it's not uh, cleaned up and it also did not just drop out of the mag body, I had to push it out, um, whereas the SIG one is nice and smooth and clean and beautiful and yeah, I guess that's the difference between uh, 15 or $20 magazine and the Forty whatever dollar magazine, but the other difference, of course, is two rounds. What kind of monster takes a Dremel to a Sig? Well, it's not a Dremel; it's a Milwaukee. Well, here's an original Sig follower versus the modified. It's maybe nine millimeters less. We'll see what happens. This was chamfered pretty good inside, so I tried to do that. On this one too although I don't know that it's 
really going to matter. Well, we'll see. I'm going to be responsible and not cycle it through the gun in the house with live ammo. And I don't have um, enough snap caps. But there were nine rounds in there. The last one was pretty tight. I think the next follower might cut just a little bit more. I don't know how it functions. I mean, it's still long enough. I don't think it's going to tilt in there. But we'll see. Maybe Dremel is better after all than Hacksaw, even if you think you're being careful. So these are the Armory Craft Plus One um, magazine base pads. You don't use the little retainer, apparently, so I took that off the spring. Um, what holds it on, oh, there's no way you can see it. There's a little set screw that goes in from the bottom, that comes out from the top, that once it's slid onto the mag body, it comes up behind it to hold it in place. So you don't have the little push button anymore. Which also means, unfortunately, you can't take it apart without this little tiny Allen screw. But whatever. We'll see. I guess if I was a real YouTuber, I'd have a light, you know, those fancy ones that make rings around your eyes. But I'm not, so I'm using LEDs that strobe the light. Right in front of my thumbnail, if you get it just right, there is the end of the set screw. It comes up and jams the, um, right there, so that the base plate does not slide off. But here we are once again. Oh my gosh, they come out quick, especially when you're left-handed. Or doing it left-handed and not painting. Yeah, whatever. There were nine in there. So, here we have ten. Follower and base plate. And they don't cooperate. Through. Whatever. It was ten. One. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Two. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay! Well, carving up the Pro Mag isn't super elegant, but a little bit of blue in on there and it'll look just fine. Most importantly, locks in the gun and jams with snap caps. All right, second Pro Mag. Put some bluing on it. All right, I'll put Sharpie on it. But it looks slightly less hacked into. Maybe it'll work this time. No, it just it doesn't work on video. I've done it six times without the camera rolling. I don't know. Oh, oh there you go. I don't know. I do know that the Tipton snap caps are undersized, and that can sometimes make weird things happen. Also, it's a Pro Mag, what do you expect? Maybe it doesn't like my A zooms, which is weird because they've usually been pretty reliable. Well, after a little bit of testing yesterday and a outlaw steel challenge match today, all told probably 250 or so rounds. Um, every one of my magazines, my modified magazines, functioned flawlessly in that the gun didn't jam. They cycled fine. 
Um, the only issue I had was um, reloads. They wouldn't drop free. Um, and it's interesting. Well, we'll back up a little bit. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm going to edit that out. Um, yeah, dropping free. So, empty magazine. No problem. This is a SIG magazine. This is what I think I'm going to do is trim in the, the follower and putting the base plate on. Even the um, Pro Mag magazines drop fine when they're empty. However, if you're doing a tactical reload, you want to drop a magazine that still has some rounds in it. They work perfectly when they're not supposed to. Hold on. Golly. All right. We're going to try again to simulate the problem. There. There it is. Yay. See? Didn't come all the way out. You can pull it out. And you'll notice that the round... Where are we so we can get focused? The round has been pushed slightly forward. And I believe the front of the bullet is actually dragging on something in the mag well. And it catches on the, the mag catch. Um... And at first, I thought it was just the, the Pro Mags, but it actually, at least in messing around with snap caps, um, the Sig Mags do it too. So, I don't know. That's kind of weird. And I, again, with the snap caps, even a completely unmolested by me Sig Magazine stock, you can see it's got the full length follower and regular base plate. Um, it would do the same thing. So, I don't know what to make of that. I really feel like at the match, it happened more or it was worse with the Pro Mags. But I think I'm going to do a little more experimenting with live ammo at the range. But overall, I'm kind of leaning towards the trimming the uh, follower. I don't know if you can see. Where can you see? Oh, yeah, see, it, it doesn't come down as far. And put in the plus one base plate on. Uh, because also that ends up with slightly shorter overall magazine. And still ten rounds. But, on the other hand, having that extra bit sticking out the bottom, if you're going to have to rip it out, it's more to grab onto. So, I don't know. I'm just thrilled that none of them jammed. Um, that was fun. Another thing I'm not thrilled about, though. The finish... On my pistol is get see those spots. The finish is coming off, which is weird. And uh, back here on the serrations, the finish is coming off. I mean, on a fifteen hundred dollar gun with less than a thousand rounds through it, you wouldn't think that would happen. Oh well. The holster's going to wear the finish off anyway. Like, there. It is what it is. Hey, at least I got 10 round magazines for it now. I guess what I forgot to conclude with is even though the Pro Mags are cheaper, and where is it? This one, for some reason, I thought this one ran better. I don't remember why, but that's why I marked it the good one. And this is number two. Oh, I know why. That was based on my snap cap playing around, which, yeah, despite all the problems I had with that, they all worked um, with live ammo, which was cool. But anyway, this is a, a much cheaper modification, but I don't... It's a little harder because you got to be a little more precise, and I just don't have as much faith in it as doing... trimming the, the follower and adding the base plate because I'm not altering any of the geometry, you know, on the mag body. So... I think moving forward, I'm probably going to do a couple more of them um, just for reliability. And I, like I said, I just have a little more faith in, in that. But I'll end the video with um, some of my match. Um, the gun worked great. I wasn't shooting it too well. But in my defense, the past, I don't know, half dozen matches, I've been shooting a 22 revolver double action. So that was a whole lot different gripping this and thinking about squeezing that light trigger and having it go off as I'm thinking about squeezing it. 
One more rant. Gosh, I sound like a real YouTuber now. So for holster, um, I couldn't find a competition style holster that was made for the SIG P210. I did buy a leather one, but that's a leather holster and I wanted something competition. So this is a, what does it say on there? C and G. This is for poly 80 Glocks. Um, but check this out. Fits in there right nice. One thing I had to do, I had to trim it right here. It stuck up about to there. It was interesting. There's this little groove here. With the safety off, it fit in just fine. And fortunately, I practiced it a little bit um, as though I was doing the match and tried to holster it with the safety on, and it would not go all the way in. So I just zipped that little bit off. Um, I don't think that should affect how it handles a poly 80 anyway. Because it's got all these dimples for where you could move the the um, mount, which it's their own sort of tech lock kind of thing that I'm not thrilled with. But whatever, it worked. It's got good retention. Probably wears out my finish, but my finish is failing anyway. And I bought this thing to shoot, not to look at. So CNG for Poly 80. Oh! You gotta get into eights now, buddy! I mean, Matt did, so. It's tough, man. It's tough.